only works regarding dietary modification in case of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Thing is that the foods which, which are rich in sugar or related chemicals is best to are best to be avoided. Uh, food rich in roughage is good for controlling diabetes. That's why the vegetables those are underground like potato, wheat, carrots, these are better to be avoided. And the green leafy vegetables uh, uh, refined uh, have to uh, have non-refined uh, flour uh, that is taking rice in lesser quantity, brown breads, these are having good roughage which they, and it gives uh, a better control for diabetes in short and long term. There are a few points I want to highlight regarding diabetes, specifically in relation to gestational diabetes. Thing is that the woman was non-diabetic first time when he was she was not pregnant. Subsequently, with pregnancy, she started developing rising level of blood sugar. These are called gestational diabetes. So when the pregnancy will be over. After, that is after childbirth, we usually see that the woman becomes again non-diabetic. So if the blood sugar is more than 180 during the period of uh, pregnancy, then what to do? Best drug in this time is to, is to start soluble insulin as the first line treatment. And if the patient is not cooperating with it, Some words regarding uh, diabetes mellitus and risk of developing in organ damage in our system. In uh, most of the cases, blood sugar level more than 180 is responsible for damaging end organs. End organs means retina, the eye, the cardiac vasculatures that is coronary vessels, uh, liver and mostly the kidney. So in diabetes mellitus, the ideal target of keeping the blood sugar should be below 180 level. With the reflection of uh, the last three months of diabetic control can be find out HbA1c level also. So, uh, so the status of diabetes in a patient should be monitored by blood sugar level and HbA1c. Both are equally important. So regarding uh, if there is any end organ damage, the patient has to be referred to the super specialties for assessment and control and as a physician we must control the sugar level as fast as possible. Today's topic is the how to identify early diabetes mellitus that is the earliest sign and symptoms of diabetes mellitus. Usually, patient gives the history of frequent urination, blurring of vision at times, significant weight loss, and feeling more stressed, more tired, even after a little bit of work. Sometimes, there may be history of urine uh, 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 tract infection frequently, and there may be the history of non healing of ulcers. So, this will give a clue that the blood sugar of the patient has to be 
to private we check immediately to find out whether the patient is having diabetes or not so if the diabetes is discovered as a new case main guidelines should be given regarding dietary control and change of lifestyle if he doesn't get control question of oral diabetes medicines arises talks on uh, modern day food habit and diabetes mellitus thing is that if uh, diabetes is little bit genetically determined also if both the parents have got diabetes then there is more risk for developing diabetes in offspring this is one group is one group and the other group is there is no risk factor for developing diabetes mellitus but in today's life consumption of fast foods the beef the cheese and other pizzas these foods have got a high level of blood sugar level and they are having less roughage so that's why the chance of development of diabetes is more with this sort of fast food which are available nowadays mostly these foods are more people are more to the children and more to the regarding these group of foods so the chance of development of childhood diabetes is more and more more nowadays than the previous times